and welcome. Welcome to the live Bible study in the Holy Spirit. My name is Yvette Celeste. I just want to welcome you to the live Bible study in the Holy Spirit. Welcome one. Welcome all. Let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Lord, for you are Lord. And as we lift our hearts to you, dear Jesus, we ask to please lift our hearts and minds in your holy presence, in the sanctifying grace of your Son, dear Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and in your mercy that endures forever, that we praise in your goodness, which is everlasting, that we rejoice in. We give thanks to you, O Lord, in your hearing. And as we invite the Lord who is with us, as we invite the Lord in our hearts, we ask a very special holy prayer for the Holy Spirit to lift us in every area of our heart, shift us in every area of our heart. Speak to us, Lord, for your servant is listening. And as we ask in this very special way, we ask to shape every area of our heart and nourish every area of our heart, illuminate every area of our heart and mind in your holy presence, illuminate the word, sanctify our flesh, and wherever needed, O Lord, shift every area of our lives in you. Help to make all of our paths straight and wherever needed, may your mercy be with all wherever needed in the world. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beautiful. So as we ask in this way, we can place our own very special intentions into the sacred heart of the Lord. And why don't we pray for all of our family members, all of our friends, all who are listening to this podcast and everyone in the world. Let's just pray over every nation. All nations belong to the Lord. And as we pray over every nation, we place the world into the sacred heart of the Lord. We place each other into the sacred heart of the Lord and our family member into the sacred heart of the Lord and ask for healing for whoever's asking for healing especially if you're asking on for healing for yourself or on behalf of another. As we ask for healing for all in the world, we give thanks to you, O Lord, and we ask for your holy presence, the Holy Spirit, to breathe on every area of the world that is asking for healing. Breathe on every area of the world, O Lord, in your holy presence. Breathe on every area of the world, O Lord, especially for the nations that do not love, do not praise, and do not adore Thee. We praise You, O Lord. We love You. We praise You. We adore You. And as we ask in this way, we ask, dear Eternal Father, glory to You, Hosanna in the highest. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Eternal Father, we lift our hearts to you and ask for the most precious blood of our Lord, the most precious body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles around the world in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges and indifferences by which he is so greatly offended. We ask through the merits of the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and the holy immaculate heart of Mary for conversion for all nations, especially all that do not love, do not praise and do not adore the Lord. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. So welcome one. Welcome all. As we gather today, we are Listening to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 9a, and verses 10 through 13. Now, you can find today's reading on the USCCB website for December 11th, 2021. And if you are have the means for a phone or a tablet and you just want to search for 
Matthew 17. Type the letters USCCB behind it. That stands for United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, USCCB. But what will happen is it will take you to the Gospel of Matthew and all of the chapters of Matthew will be on top. Just make sure 17 is clicked or toggled and you'll want to scroll down to verse 9 through 13. We're going to read from 9a. That usually indicates there's two parts to a verse, maybe two sentences. So we're just going to read the top part. And that is the gospel that is given to us in the daily readings for December 11th, 2021. Now, of course, if you have a Bible handy, you can open to the Gospel of Matthew. If this is your first time opening the Bible, this is the Holy Spirit that you are listening to already. So as you listen in the Holy Spirit, turn to the table of contents, search for the Gospel of Matthew, turn to that page number. When you get to that page number, you're going to look for chapter 17. It'll begin with an introduction in chapter one. When you get to chapter 17, you're just going to notice that all of the verses have little tiny numbers next to them. You're going to, they're in numerical order. So you're going to look for verse nine and 10 through 13. This is where we're reading from today, and why don't we get started, and congratulations whether you're opening the Bible for the first time or the nine millionth time, that is the Holy Spirit that we are listening to when we open the Gospels, act on the Gospels, share the messages of the Lord with all that we meet, and ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen us in every area of spiritual weakness to be able to act on the very word of the Lord that we read every time we open the Gospels. Ask the Holy Spirit to really illuminate the word as we read the Gospels, and invite Jesus to help us in understanding. Help us, O Lord, in every fruit, in every gift, to be able to hear your holy voice. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's get started. This is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 9a, 10 through 13. As they were coming down from the mountain, the disciples asked Jesus, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said in reply, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of St. John the Baptist. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. So in today's word, we want to turn the word into a prayer. And the way that we do that is we just send praise first. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. And of course, we invite the Holy Spirit in every area of our lives to glorify your holy name. As we sing praise to you, O Lord, we give thanks in hearing your living word. For as you have come at the appointed time... God who has sent you has so loved the world that he gave us his only son, that whoever believe in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Jesus, you came for us all. You came for us at the appointed time and you will come again. Lift us in every area of our own daily lives. Lift us, O Lord. Breathe in us, O Lord. Pour your holy love and your living water through our minds, through our hearts, through every cell of our being, and lift us, renew us, revive us, and wherever needed, Lord, help us all hear your holy word, your voice, O Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beautiful. So, as we may God bless everyone out there, as I ask for the Holy Spirit to please touch my own heart and help me in this podcast to glorify the name of the Lord, we can all ask that for us, for ourselves, for our family members, for all in the world. Glory to you, O Lord, in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We ask for the Holy Spirit to lift us in every area of our life. 
and in our hearts and minds and in that of our family members and all in the world to glorify your holy name. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beautiful. So the disciples who have given up everything to walk with the Lord, to spend time with the Lord, have been taken by Jesus up Mount Tabor. At least it's been told that it's Mount Tabor. And they had just witnessed the transfiguration of the Lord, which is incredible in the knowledge that is in the transfiguration of the Lord in itself. On the transfiguration of the Lord, they accompanied Jesus. This is uh, St. Peter, James, and John. Jesus took three disciples up the mountain by themselves. And as they were traveling up the mountain, which is where a mountain is noted throughout the Bible, that this is where the Lord, this is where the Lord is, is on a mountain. Many of the prophets would travel up a mountain, Mount Sinai included, Mount Zion is referred to in the Bible, Mount Tabor is also another mountain. And Abraham even climbed a mountain with his son Isaac. There's many mountains that they climbed to go be with the Lord in his presence. And here they are in the very presence of the Lord. And the Lord is taking them up the mountain. And as they're traveling up the mountain, Jesus is transfigured in front of them. And as he's transfigured in front of him, his eyes, his face, his son, I mean, his clothing were like the sun became white as light. Uh, Jesus's glory is being seen here. The glory of the Lord is upon him and is emanating from him in a way that they've never seen before. And they also were, as they're watching the Lord being transfigured right in front of them, they are also seeing Moses and Elijah who are appearing to them in an apparition and conversing with Jesus. And Peter, not realizing it's a vision, he's just thinking he's part of the, he's watching Moses and Elijah, Elijah speak to Jesus and Jesus who is conversing with Moses and Elijah. Now this has incredible meaning on its own because the glory of the Lord is what is strengthening Peter, James, and John. The glory of the Lord is something that no one has seen yet because the resurrection hasn't happened. Jesus isn't risen yet. And that's what nine verse nine B is all about is nine uh, B says, do not tell anyone the vision to, do not tell the vision to anyone until the son of man has been raised from the dead. And the reason for that in the footnotes, it does read that until the son of man has been raised from the dead, only in the light of Jesus's resurrection, can the meaning of his life and mission be truly understood until then, no testimony to the vision will lead the people to faith. So this is a precursor to the glory of the Lord and Peter, James, and John, who are the three apostles that Jesus tends to take with him more often than the twelve. This is to strengthen them because they're about to witness the crucifixion, really, that Jesus is going to lay down his life. And this is just days before this happens. So as Jesus is transfigured before him and the before them and the glory of the Lord is shining upon him. Elijah, who represents the prophets and Moses, who represents the 10 commandments. Jesus has, is the king of all the prophets. He's also the incarnate word. He has come to fulfill the law of God, which is what Moses represents, not abolish it, but fulfill it. has come and appeared to these three um, apostles. But then what further happens in the transfiguration of the Lord, which is pretty incredible, is that there is now a bright cloud that is cast over all of them. And from the cloud came a voice that says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now, God has appeared in a cloud over many areas of the Bible as well. And this is also 
Jesus, who is the new covenant for God had appeared over the ark of the old covenant in um, the Old Testament. God had appeared over Mary. The Holy Spirit will come and overshadow you, showing that Mary was the was really the ark of the new covenant and also appearing over Jesus in the baptism where he said this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased here God is giving us a very specific instruction this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased listen to him and this is something that we should take very well note of because God is the most high this is truly his son as he said this is my beloved son there is nothing higher then the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this is what the apostles had just witnessed and have written down in the Holy Spirit for us all to hear the word of the Lord. This is my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. It is Jesus who brings life to our bodies. It is the word of God that when acted upon and is living in every way, shapes us in every area of our lives and the eternal promises that are written within the living word, which are also written in our hearts, is promised to each one of us, promised to you, promised to me, promised for all nations. And this is also what the three apostles had just witnessed as they're walking down the mountain now with Jesus. They witnessed the transfiguration, which is the glory of God, the glory of the Lord being witnessed with conversing with Moses and Elijah and Elijah, who is one of the greatest prophets, has come. And this is something that the disciples are asking Jesus is why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And they're asking this to him after Jesus has already told them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the son of man has been raised from the dead. He's alluded to his resurrection they are not hearing it just yet but they will reflect on this later the disciples asked him why do the scribes say elijah elijah must come first he said in reply elijah will indeed come and restore all things and he did do that but i tell you that elijah has already come and they did not recognize him but did to him whatever they pleased so also will the son of man suffer at their hands Jesus is referring to St. John the Baptist and the disciples are also noting this as they're being told that in the Holy Spirit that Elijah who has come and has really reformed everything for the Lord as a precursor to the to the coming of the Lord, so has St. John the Baptist. And they didn't recognize St. John the Baptist. Now, both St. John the Baptist and Elijah wore camel's hair. St. John the Baptist and Elijah were set apart. Um, St. John the Baptist had the really, really self-discipline to set himself apart from even Jewish society, really in a, in a state of fasting, um, extreme self-discipline. He only ate locusts and wild honey. He wore camel's hair. And Elijah, who is known as the really fiery reformer in the Holy Spirit, St. John the Baptist also came preparing the way, pre um, preaching really a baptism of repentance before the day of the Lord. And that is witnessed in the prophet uh, Malachi in Malachi chapter three, verse 23 and 24. Now I'm sending you a Elijah, the prophet before the day of the Lord comes the great and terrible day. He will turn the heart of fathers to their sons and the heart of sons to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with utter destruction. 
Jesus came at the appointed time. And this is the kingdom of God that is upon them. And there are some that are recognizing this is the Lord. Peter, James, and John are three of them. They have answered the call of the Lord. They have followed him. They have given up everything of theirs. They're all of their possessions. They have spent time, countless days with the Lord really at his feet, just spending time with him and paying attention, really learning and being strengthened in the Lord's presence, being strengthened in the very word of the Lord as they spent time with him. Now, there are other apostles. There's 12 apostles altogether. Not all of them were taken to every uh, vision that the Lord had brought them to. And these disciples had also given up everything to spend time with him. And yet these three are Peter, James, and John. These are the three first fruits, if you will, all 12, well, 11, if you don't count Judas Iscariot. Um, although Judas was given the word of the Lord, he didn't act upon it. These are really the first fruits of the church. These are really the first fruits of the disciples and the apostles. Now there are still other disciples that have agreed this is the Lord, have followed him. There's great crowds that have brought their family members and friends to the Lord and that is very wonderful as well. And yet here is the ones that have not recognized Elijah, they have not recognized St. John the Baptist, they have not recognized Jesus, they have not recognized the appointed time of the Lord. And these are the ones that have really martyred St. John the Baptist and will also continue to Um, at the appointed time, the Lord will lay down his life for us all. They were also crucify the Lord himself because they didn't understand that this is the word of the Lord. They didn't understand this was the Messiah that God had sent. This is the one that is the beloved son of God. This is the one that ha all had waited centuries and centuries and centuries since Adam and Eve waited for the appointed one of God. And this is the fulfillment of the Davidic promise that God had promised to all that, a, that God would raise a loin from David that would rule over the house of Jacob forever. And this is the one, this is the son of God. Listen to him. This is whom I'm well pleased. And that is a message for all of us. As we spend time in the Lord's presence, we are also strengthened. As we come before the Lord, placing everything at the Lord's feet, we are also strengthened. As we invite the Holy Spirit, we are also strengthened. And as Jesus has come once and will come again in his glory, we can see here in the transfiguration of the Lord, as the disciples just did, and this is a message for all of us, that the glory of the Lord is brilliant. The glory of the Lord is glorious in every way. As he is the son of God, he is the most high and there's nothing higher than the father and the son and the Holy Spirit. Nothing is higher than God himself. And as I ask in the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, please lift us always. Help us all shine in you. Help us all glorify your holy name. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. We lift our hearts to the Lord and sing praise to the Lord for he has come and he will come again. And just as St. John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance, Jesus who is the bread of life, this is the 
bread that has come down from heaven, the very body of the Lord, the body that has been laid down for all of us. And this is what we receive in Eucharist. So even in the sacraments, as St. John came before Jesus, St. John, who preached repentance, is really our sacrament of reconciliation. And also Jesus, who gave us a sacrament of reconciliation and gave us the sacrament of the Eucharist. All can partake in the body and blood of our Lord. Now, if you haven't received the very body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can call your local Catholic parish and make haste to do so. Ask questions about the body of Christ because he is truly present. There is a miracle that happens in the Holy Spirit in every full Catholic Mass. And as the priest who is consecrating the host works with the power of the Holy Spirit, is really acting in persona Christi, we all can receive the Lord daily, really, in daily Mass, weekly, in every Sunday as we place the Lord first, and in every full Mass in the Catholic Church, no matter which city you go to, the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon the host and is transubstantiated the very body, the host into the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the power of the Holy Spirit has transubstantiated, really transformed the very substance of the host into the body and blood of Christ, Jesus is very much present in the Eucharist, in the Eucharistic celebration in every Catholic Mass. And that is what we can receive daily. It is a daily miracle that happens in every Catholic Mass. So, in every full Catholic Mass, I should say. So, welcome one, welcome all. If you haven't been to Mass in a while or if you've never been, come Come before the Lord, spend time in the Lord's presence. This is the very altar, the earthly altar of the Lord. And as we come before him, he is truly present in the altar. He is truly present in the body and blood. He is truly present in what we receive in the Eucharist. He is truly present and has given us the grace of consuming his very body and blood in the heavenly banquet, the Eucharistic celebration that is the sacrament that all can partake in. And to partake in it, just call your local Catholic church, inquire of the sacramental prep classes. Every sacrament we have is given to us in the gospels. And that is what is so incredible about receiving all of them as we receive installments of the Holy Spirit that are given to us from the Lord himself. We receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given to us in his gospels in the institution of the Eucharist and given for all in the world. All nations can come to the Lord and receive the Lord. And all it takes is a phone call. Come to Mass. Ask questions. Sign up. Register for the sacramental prep classes to be able to receive the Lord. For it is truly the Lord that we receive. He is present. And I thank you so much for listening to the live Bible study in the Holy Spirit. Now, tomorrow happens to be, and if you're, depending on when you're listening to this podcast, December 12th is the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, who appeared before St. Juan Diego in Mexico. This was during a time when they were still making human sacrifices, and yet the Heavenly Mother still came and appeared to St. Juan Diego, still had such great love, and had asked that a church be built. Um, he, just to make the story really short, he had went to a bishop and let him know that he saw an apparition of the Heavenly Mother, and the bishop wanted proof. So St. Juan Diego went back and told the lady, um, Our Lady, Our Lady of Guadalupe, that he, the bishop had wanted proof. And um, 
he was supposed to be, we had just celebrated the feast day of St. Juan Diego just a few days ago, I think on Thursday, the 9th, if I'm not mistaken. So his uncle, whom he loved dearly, was very, very sick. And he was supposed to meet Our Lady of Guadalupe on the 11th, but he didn't make that meeting. And he was a little embarrassed to walk past the area that he had originally seen the lady because he missed the appointment with her. And he was embarrassed that he missed the appointment with her. And he did so because his uncle was really sick and he wanted to find him um, a suitable you know, doctor, if you will. And she came to him anyway. And this time she met him where he was at. And she had, she had, um, after he explained, I didn't come because my uncle is very sick. And she said, am I not your mother? And she had healed his uncle from the illness. But further, she said, he said, well, the bishop would like a sign. So she gave him roses, the most beautiful roses you've ever seen. And this is in the middle of December. So there's no roses this beautiful that grow in the middle of December, at least not here in this particular region. Very little places do uh, roses grow in December. These roses grew and they were beautiful. And she asked him to put them in his tilma. So he did, he, which is his garment that he was wearing. He gathered up the roses in his own garment, which is called a tilma. And he went back to the bishop. And when he went to show him the beautiful roses, instead of just the roses falling from his tilma, her image, the Our Lady of Guadalupe was imprinted on the front of his tilma. And the messages behind her image is just really incredible. You can uh, search for those uh, messages. Mother Mary doesn't come just randomly. There's nothing very random about any apparition of Mother Mary. Uh, everything is very detailed. And that is because she is the mother of the Lord. She has special grace to be the mother of the Lord. So as we just celebrated the feast of the Immaculate Conception, and tomorrow we celebrate, or at least December 12th, whenever you listen to this podcast, we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. This is our Heavenly Mother. And as we use her rosary to pray for those in the world who may not understand how wonderful it is to receive the Lord. She came at a very troubled time in history in 15, the 1500, 1531. What's also miraculous about this tilma is that it was put on display. They now have the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Tepeyac, and the, which is in Mexico. And this tilma has been, um, there was some people that wanted to destroy the tilma and they placed a bomb right under it. It has, uh, the bomb destroyed everything, destroyed the marble flooring, uh, bent the crucifix in half. And yet the tilma was not harmed. The tilma was not touched. There is some very beautiful meaning behind every aspect of the tilma and if you look up the meanings on why everything looked the way it does, it, it currently still does, it is incredible. It was also um, imprinted on cactus, like canvas, and cactus canvas should have dissolved maybe 20 or 30 years later, and it never has. It's kept its contact. So it is truly a miracle that this image of Our Lady of Guadalupe was imprinted even with our modern technology that we have now, they cannot understand how beautiful this tilma is. And even with regular paint, they would not have ever been able to paint the detail on this type of canvas, the detail that is imprinted in this tilma. So this is truly a miracle in her apparition, a truly a miracle that is on display currently. And you can see her image in the Our Lady of Guadalupe. You can search for the really beautiful meaning behind every part of her cloak, every part of her mantle, every part of her dress, and what it symbolizes, everything about her image that it symbolizes. When she came at this particular time in history, 
Many were converted to the Catholic faith. Many had turned to her son, Jesus Christ. And that's what Mother Mary does. She points the way to her son. Even in the wedding of Cana, she told everyone, do whatever he tells you. As the mother of the Lord, who loves her son so greatly, has come to share her messages that point the way to her son as she is mother of the most high yet her son is lord and her son is the most high so we listen to the gospels act on the word of the lord use her rosary as a very special spiritual sword i mentioned her mantle earlier there's a marian mantle consecration that can be done. It's a 46 day consecration. It's very beautiful if you'd like to look into that. And further, what I witnessed as I was praying the rosary myself is I felt the heavenly mother's love. And that's something I can, that she sends really to all who pray her rosary, use her rosary. And as we place the rosary before the throne of God, she prays for our, all of our intentions and her prayers are her mantle. She places her mantle over us all. And this is a very special grace that comes from praying her rosary. So this is why it is known that her rosary is a spiritual sword over our family members because nothing gets past her mantle. And um, I was praying, just to let you know, I was praying the rosary and in a vision, I saw a vision myself. I watched her prayers over the Prince of Peace Catholic Church that I was praying in side. I was praying over different intentions and I watched her mantle being placed. I watched her prayers, which are like her mantle, being placed over the church. Now in the vision, as she placed her mantle over the church, I watched the enemy try to attack the church and had no, the enemy has no power over her rosary. The enemy has zero power over Heavenly Mother's prayers over us and over all of our intentions. So use her rosary, use her rosary to pray for conversion for those who do not love, do not praise and do not adore the Lord and may not even know anything about the Lord. The Mother Mary has placed that in my heart to share with everyone here. So use her rosary over our families, over our friends in every area of the world. Offer her rosary as an act of love, which is a spiritual work of mercy for those who do not love the Lord and for the special graces of the Lord, the Holy Spirit to help all here how incredible it is to receive her Lord, I mean, sorry, to receive her son, Jesus Christ, in his body and blood, the Eucharist. That is the glorious call of the Lord himself. That is the glorious call that the Lord has placed in my heart to share with everyone is that all are welcome, all are invited Come to Mass and receive the Lord. And if you haven't received, sign up at your local Catholic church in the sacramental prep classes that are available for all ages, for every family member in the world. May God bless you. This I've received in the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look kindly upon us and grant us his peace. Lord, grant us all your rest. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bye families. Bye everyone out there. May God bless you. Happy Advent to everyone as a special Advent. Holy rosary penance even you can offer the rosary as a penance for advent for any family member all family members in fact offer it for every family member of the lord especially all nations who may not love praise and adore the lord may all glorify his mercy this i received in the holy spirit for everyone may god bless you see you next week bye for now